please start your topic. Uh, good morning to all. Thank you, Ashish sir, for having me here. And uh, it's not good to start the innings in a test match. So my topic is total knee uh, arthroplasty in TBS stress fractures and some emphasis on extraarticular deformity also as Asi sir has asked me to cover that part also. So what is extraarticular deformity in an osteoarthritis knee? Any deformity in femur or tibia which is outside the confines of extraarticular ligaments of knee joint. That is it is beyond the insertion of collateral ligaments. So a very good paper in JBGS by uh, Dr. Babo from Mumbai, he showed that Anything three centimeter above the joint, three centimeter above the joint line in a towards femur and seven centimeter below the joint line in tibia, this box of ten centimeter forms the intraarticular because here is the collateral which is attaching. So anything beyond this box is a extraarticular deformity, and he showed that about eighty percent of these are in the box only. So we should know the normal alignment angles. I am not going in detail about this. Just to remember the. Proximal femoral angle lateral and the distal tibial angle is about 90 degree. The LDF and MPT is about 87 degree. And in sagittal degree, in sagittal, the posterior distal femoral angle and the posterior proximal tibial angle is around 81 degrees. Uh, Ulf et al. have shown that as the deformity goes near the joint, the amount of resection of the bone at the joint increases. So deformity as close to the joint the more resection of bone and more ligamentous distension will be happening. As you can see here, the ligamentous distension will increase and the amount of deformity at the knee will increase. And it showed that for the same coronal deformity, for every 10% of length that deformity moved closer to the joint, an additional 2 degree of overall limb mal element will present. So suppose there is a 6 degree, 6 6 centimeter in a 30 centimeter femur down the uh, deformity, about 6 degree of alignment will increase from normal 7. So what are the decision making in extra articular deformity? First, whether we have to go for a corrective osteotomy at the cora or we do an intra articular correction. So Wang et al. have given a principle that you draw a mechanical axis of the, do I have a pointer? So you draw a mechanical axis of the femur from the center of head to the midpoint of the trochlea and then make a perpendicular line on this line on this line and if it is cutting more bone of the femur so that it is going beyond the insertion of the collateral ligaments that means you have to do the collateral you have to do you have to do point So if you draw a perpendicular angle to the mechanical axis of the femur and if it is going beyond the confines of collateral ligament, at that time you have to do a cora osteotomy. But if it is within the box, within the collateral ligament insertion, then you can do an intraarticular correction. Similarly for tibia, you draw an axis from the distal limb of the tibia and if it is crossing the joint, then you can do an intraarticular correction and if it is beyond the joint line, you have to do a correction at the cora. The second decision making is we have to do a one stage or two stage. So overall, there are four options left for an extra articular deformity correction. Either we do a two stage surgery, first we correct at a core the osteotomy, and then we do a TKR after on after healing of the fracture. Or we do in the same sitting, but do two surgeries at two sides, one for the osteotomy and one for the TKR. Third is we do a one surgery only with one incision, but at two sides, correcting the osteotomy, correcting the deformity and the TKR. Or we do all with a one incision at one side only. So for the first two options, the indications are larger deformity. In TBI, it is better if it is away from the joint, or if it is a rotational deformity, or if it is a femoral deformity. Because femoral deformity is different from tibia. Because as we cut the femur and we do soft tissue balancing, the distal cut will increase, so the extension gap will increase, but flexion gap will remain normal. So there will be imbalance between the extension gap and the flexion gap. So in a femur, if we are having a large extension gap, better to do a correction at the core and not intraarticular. Second point, femur always has some malrotation and in virus, if we correct the coronal deformity, there will be external rotation and maltracking of the patella. So we have to always internal rotate the femoral component either by epicondylar osteotomy or by cutting the more posterior cut. 
so that was humanly difficult and that's why it's better to have a two stage surgery or one stage with two sides the third option it can be done if the, it is very close to the joint but not so much deformities there in the femur or if a tibia you can do but better to have a navigation in these cases or so tibia stress fracture will come in this part only now fourth option if it is a intra articular tibia stress fracture we can do in one sitting only again by the wang's principle if it is crossing the knee joint fifth option not generally mentioned but because now cpac cpac classification has come that all knees are not having horizontal joint so in that case sometimes we can leave the osteotomy side we can leave the deformity and we can just correct the joint if the deformity is away from the joint so it has been shown that if we do only tkr we, if we just align the joint before, without touching the mechanical axis there will be no they, they might be joint be be parallel but they will be difficult for any im fixation difficult for improvement in ld and difficult to maintain mechanical axis second option is you maintain the mechanical axis and also correct the joint line that is good but again the bone distortion will more and the third option is if you correct the osteotomy and do the tkr you can get a good mechanical axis less bone correction and all im and the im fixation and im guide can be go easily with less bone uh, resection so for planning of extra articular deformity if the femur has more than 20 degree tibia has more than 30 degree and sagittally there is more than 20 degree deformity we can do intra if it is not so you can do intra articular correction with or without constraint implants if it is more then we should do a osteotomy at cora and tkr and also if osteotomy is stable with nail im nail is preferred because navigation will be easier and there will not to be removed all the screws and but if we can't do navigation then plating has to be done slightly about tibia stress fracture about 1 to 1.5% incidence in india in bihar especially in this region it's more common because pa pa patients come later on that different uh, classification by mulla ji mittal and the kending et al which uh, i'm not going to the risk factors generally osteoporosis possess other factors are there and eccentric overloading of the knee joint causes this in clinical examination one thing is very important always look for the mobility of stress fracture whether it is mobile or rigid it is stiff non union or a mal union get a full length x rays get you can get a stress view also you can see how a stress view shows that yes our stress fracture is can be aligned and we can go for a simple tkr we have long stem so the three options in tkr basically third and fourth option of the extra articular deformity we can do a one stage long stem tkr one stage plating of fracture and tkr and two stage so in one stage if it is a impending fracture or a undisplaced fracture we can simply go for a tkr with a long stem if there is a mobile non union we can correct it on uh, on table we can align the mechanical axis of the tibia and we can go for two options either intramedullary jig or extramedullary jig initially i used just two minutes initially i used intramedullary jig in my first two cases but now i am going for extramedullary jig so this was a intramedullary cases where a line was done and a fibrotomy was done but now i go for extra articular uh, extra medullary jig and again the results are same so point for intramedullary jig we all know it should be in the anti it should be in the anti uh, anterior one third tibia plateau just anterior to the tibial spine and central medial laterally if it is a if it is a tibia vera slightly go more lateral than what is the actual point because tibia is bored it's so better to go slightly lateral so what's the length and the diameter of the stem it is generally said that canal filling ratio should be more than 0.85 and the length should be at least 4 cm distal to the fracture site preferably 5 to 6 cm then third then the third type of uh, stress fracture is mal union but less than 30 degree in that case we can go for with fibrotomy or without fibrotomy initially i used to do fibrotomy but without fibrotomy also the results are same because overall we have to maintain the mal, uh, mechanical axis of the whole limb then last one is the mal union with more than 30 degree varus in that case we have to do osteotomy we have to correct the osteotomy and then we do for tkr intramedullary jig is required in such cases now no literature support for a plating and a tkr but a few cases where there is severe mal union we can go for plating and tkr with a long stem in a tibia stress fracture so there are many studies which are now pro uh, promoting only one stage tkr with long stem without any plating without any fibula so for if a impending on a acute fracture we can go for long tibia stem with tkr for mobile non union and a mal union less than 30 degree we can go for long stem tkr 
either with IM or EM jig. And for malunium, more than 30 degree values, we have to go for long stem with ostotomy at first sight and fibrillectomy. So in our country, in our part of uh, in our part of world, why this is so common? This is my own relative having one-sided stress fracture. I did it. She's working very good on that side, but still she's not going for the other TKR. She said I will go get it done for after one year. I think she will, she wants that fracture also to go have a tibia stress fracture, and then she will come to me again. She's my own relative. Thank you. Okay, doctor. Abhinav, thank you very much for your nice presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, any, any question? Okay, if no question, may I call upon Dr. Deep, Deepak Sampath for his presentation. Dr. Deepak. <laughs> 